Joe Christovac, Jeremy Plunk for Night School, and this edition we're going to talk about a very important aspect of horse racing, handicapping, potentially winning, and that's money management. Well, that's more than half the game. I mean, you've got to handicap the winners, but you've got to play them right. You can have days when you're one for ten and you walk out a big winner, and you have days when you're five for ten and walk out a loser. So how you play them is as important as how you pick them. Well, let's talk about money management in general. We all start the day with a bankroll. We don't want to have to take a trip to the dreaded ATM machine. The walk of shame. The walk of shame, per se. So how do you attack it? I mean, do you go into a card saying to yourself, I've got three horses I'm really focusing on? Do you go into it with a plan? I do. I mean, you take your bankroll. The average player plays about 150 to 200, 250 a day. I mean, that's the per capita wager. So take your bankroll and be realistic. Not everybody's a big splurger. Not everybody's a $2 better. If you're realistically playing in that 150 to 200 a day range, you have a really good shot of walking out with four, five, six hundred $600 on a good day. And that's a nice rake if you can take that home from the track. Don't try to overshoot it. That's the thing. Don't start with a $10 bankroll and think you're going to come out with 1200 It doesn't work that way. And don't start with a $1,000 bankroll and think you're going to turn that into 10 dollars grand. The guys who are playing big money are grinders. They're not the kind of people who are looking to just turn it around and really slam it on one given day. So be smart with the way you wager your money. And of course, like you said, the key horses for you for a particular day are the ones you really want to focus on. If you've got $100 to play for the day and you've got three key horses, I would put probably 25 on each of those horses and have 75% of my income for the entire day on those three key horses. Now, you don't necessarily have to pay 25 on them to win, but you'll, you'll make your bets based on that kind of percentages. Maybe those would be your exactos or your pick threes ending to that horse that you key in on. Worst feeling in the world is really liking a horse in the eighth or ninth race and being broke before that race comes up and seeing that horse win and pay $12. Some days you wake up in the morning, Jeremy, you just feel like playing. You feel like gambling. You feel like betting the races. Other days you feel like making money and investing. Yeah, and look, there's nothing wrong with going to the track and wanting some action. And the people who go to the track every once in a while, every 10 days, once a month, are still serious handicappers and like to play. They don't want to pass races. There's 10 on the card. They want to play all 10. There's nothing wrong with that if you're a casual player. If you're somebody who's playing more than once a week, you need to start passing races. But if you're a person who just comes to the track every once in a while and you want to play with some action, there's nothing wrong with that. And I say that's a decent approach. Have fun with it. If you're not having fun, the investing part is never even going to come to be. And if you're serious about doing well in this game, follow one, maybe two circuits. For me, I follow the Midwest. I follow Chicago racing. I follow fairgrounds. I follow Oaklawn. I follow Gulfstream in the wintertime. Because I have a good handle on those circuits, you got a much better chance to do good battle and stay ahead of the game if you're only following one or two tracks at a time. Absolutely. And if that doesn't work for you where you live, maybe your racetrack only runs a couple months out of the year and that sort of thing like that, follow the stakes races around the country. That's a great way to play if you can't watch all of the races at all of the tracks. You don't need to know all the class levels. You need to know the best class level at a particular track. And the stakes horses tend to run against each other over and over or ship to other tracks where they run against each other. So you can develop a very good feel for the national stakes scene in a very short amount of time. Whereas trying to find out a new track and their everyday nuances, that can take a long time. The bottom line is, and the moral of the story is, don't try to play 100 races a day. Don't try to play five or six racetracks a day. You might have one or two days out of the course of a few months where you get lucky and you do really well. Chances are you're going to give it back. Yeah, Bobby Franco used to say, bet more when you're hot and less when you're not. And if you're hot, let it roll and that sort of thing like that. But playing too many races is definitely the downfall of 99% of the players in the game. For more on money management, stay tuned to this edition of Night School. Hi, I'm Jerry Bossard of the New York Daily News, and welcome to Night School. Thanks for tuning in. I hope all you fans out there can learn a little bit more. Hopefully I can help you out and uh, maybe cash a couple more tickets at the, at the window.